Happy New Let's Get Physical Year. It's Jordan here back again with this week's update and all the physical releases coming to the Switch. We're in the first week of 2021, January 4th until the 8th. I hope you all had a great new year. For me, it was just another Friday. Retail, low print and imports, plus our community spotlight where you show off your pickups and potentially win a physical Switch game. We're back to a normal week this week. Uh, and just going back to last week for a second, I asked you guys to fill out a survey, you know, to give some of your opinions on this series, what you like, what you don't like, what you'd like to see improve, and so on. I know about 90 of you filled it out before it broke because the website demanded some money from me. <clears throat> So then I made a second one on Google Forms. So if you missed that second one, then consider filling it out. It's in the description below. If you'd already done the first one, don't worry, I still have the data. You don't need to fill it out again. But if you missed it, I would appreciate your feedback. All right, this week's Switch games. As expected, there's not a whole lot, but let's take a look. Iris Fall is releasing in North America this week. I think Europe is lagging behind as they usually do for PM Studios games. This is a puzzle adventure game as a young girl follows a cat into a dilapidated theatre. You solve puzzles and unfold the narrative, which is of a big focus apparently. Uh, the story is told through the environments rather than actual spoken words, so there's a lot of visual flair to this one. And I have to admit, it does look rather interesting. The North American version and later European version have different cover arts. I think I I like the European one a little more. Not sure about that one, but anyways. Uh, also, you supposedly get a download code for the soundtrack, which is a nice little bonus. And this is Alexander Kato's and Alolan Jojo's Pick of the Week. Now, just to delve into the horrors of Code in a Box, Ubisoft went a bit heavy on the codes in a box this week in Europe. Assassin's Creed 3 uh, Remastered is £20, as is Assassin's Creed Rebel Collection. They also have Just Dance 2020, which is £25. Not a fan of seeing these big releases getting codes in a box, to be honest. Hopefully, not many people buy them. All right, let's jump into the low prints. Super Rare Games have announced their latest Switch release. This time it's ITTA, or I-T-T-A, uh, I don't know. But what I do know is that this is a pretty swell twin stick shooter type game. It's visually very appealing. And if you like twin stick boss rush games, then this should be right up your alley. Juan reviewed this for the channel back in April, I think, when it first released. So be sure to check out his review in case you're unsure of securing your copy. This super rare release has 5,000 copies in total, with 3,000 being standard editions and 2,000 of them coming with a Steam box. I know you all like your Steam box. This can be ordered from January 7th, 6 p.m. UK time. And this is Boombox and Dane Wilkinson's Pick of the Week. Well, actually, uh, Reign of Dracula has been released in Europe for quite a while already, but it looks as though North America is finally getting their batch. At the end of last week, their gorgeous cover versions were, you know, starting to get sent out, so I thought I'd mention it here now in case you weren't aware. This is a fun arcade run-and-gun mixing Castlevania aesthetic with Contra gameplay. Consider checking out my review for more information. But yeah, in the US, it's exclusive to VideoGamesNewYork.com with 5,000 copies, which is a lot not for one website, but the cover art is mwah, chef kiss worthy. I definitely need to get my hands on Wallachia. Really fun game as long as you know what you're getting. This is more Contra than Symphony of the Night. And this North American release is Jonathan Rumor, Brent McLean, Ganicus, and God of Resins Pick of the Week. I also want to point out that One Print Games are having their very own blind box event. Super Rare and Limited Run had one recently, but they were announced and over with before I, you know, I could even mention them. Anyways, One Print have their three games up for grabs uh, for a slightly cheaper price and with the chance of being signed by the developers of the games, which is a nice touch. So yeah, if you want five dollars off a random game of theirs, head over to OnePrintGames.com. Hopefully, it isn't over before this video goes out. I don't know when it's supposed to finish. Now, there are no imports this week, so let's jump straight into the Let's Get Physical Community Spotlight. Remember, if you're showed off in this series, then at the end of the month, you'll be in with a chance of winning a physical Switch game. This month's prize is something a little bit obscure, a bit rough around the edges, but something I want to share with the world. Dead or school. This was never released physically in North America, only out in Japan and Europe, so it's a bit of a rough diamond, and I would like to share it with the world. 
Okay, starting with me. Well, since our Red Art Games' discount code is coming to an end next week, I thought it would be wise to finish off the games that I have from their collection. Let's go for the jugular and show off their low-key best game, Splasher. Okay, maybe it's not their best game. That would probably be Hardcore Mecha, but here we have an addictive action platformer that's kind of like Super Meat Boy kind of thing. It had a baby with Portal 2 with a slippy, slidey gel. It's bright, a colorful game that once you master, you'll be free flowing through the levels. It is a good game. Like most of their releases, the game comes with a card sleeve, although this one, as one of their earlier ones, the artwork is the same as a box. Still, it's nice and simple. And you can grab this from Red Art Games' website where there were 2,800 copies available. And you can get 10% off if you use the coupon SWATCH10. That's for any of their products on their site, SWATCH10. This promo runs out January 12th, so uh, this is the last full week to use it. It's not affiliate or anything. We don't earn anything from it. It's just something that we organize for you guys. I don't know if it's going to come back or not. I'm not sure how successful this has been for Red Art, but you know, I'll try and see what I can do. Just don't expect anything anytime soon. So yeah, Splasher from Red Art Games, a very nice, colorful platformer that I highly recommend. Alrighty then, on to Eula. Uh, we got a lot to get through as there was some hangover from late last year, so let's delve in. Adam Kataskilo picked up the fantastic Wargroove, a great love letter to Advance Wars. Art Minus Me picked up these. Uh, I'm highly anticipating the sequel to The World Ends With You. I wonder how it's uh, going to be presented on the Switch. I think they're going to have to like shake it up a little bit, you know, the gameplay to make it work a bit better on the Switch console. Aurelian picked up these, some belters in here, love the Samurai Showdown shock boxes from Pix and Love, those two are some of my favourite physicals in my collection. Blue Brito got in these two, Children of Zodiacs is one that I definitely want to pick up from Red Art Games, uh, not sure if I'm allowed to use my own discount code or not, I might have to ask them on that. Boombox showed off three pictures, nicely morbid in there, I guess it didn't get a physical in North America, I find that kind of strange. Uh, answers on the postcard please. Bruno Silva got in a double helping of Ori, these are very popular releases. Canuck picked up these three, Ghost Parade is a bit of an obscure one, I, I can find it pretty cheap here in China and I have considered picking it up but uh, I haven't seen too many opinions on the game itself. Champ Dancer picked up the gold editions of Immortal, uh, which I think looks superb, although the price is pretty heavy. Choco Loco James was lucky enough to pick up the fantastic looking Aleste collection, which actually came with a little history book, which is sweet. Chris Hepburn picked up these games. Been a while, Chris, but these are some fantastic games for sure. Blaster Master Zero is quite popular, I see. Christopher Warren showed off this beautiful photo of some great imports. The beautiful Asian cover art of Ease Origin, as that sits very proudly in my collection. Food Girls is great, and of course the beauty of Final Fantasy IX, baby. Chuck Taylor showed off the final pickups of the year. That is a very nice haul indeed. Corey Graham got in some fun games. I love Katamari, it's such a funny game. So happy to see it on the Switch, and I hope the sequels come to the console soon too. Certified showed off these. Bioshock is going pretty cheap where I am, although the download size really kills my enthusiasm for it. I just don't have the space or internet speed for it. Dame Fortuna picked up these, including the lovely edition of Witch Spring 3 Refined with the art book and soundtrack CD. Just wonderful, definitely my favorite physical of the year. Derek Jenkins, many thanks for using our links and codes to pick up this massive haul. I mean, this is devastatingly awesome. Uh, I mean, I'm just tearing up looking at the magnificence here. Highly recommend all of them. Well, maybe not Waifu Uncovered. <clears throat> Eliza Crawford was another to pick up the deluxe edition of Wargroove. Was that on sale or something? Elisa picked up two beautiful packages of Sakuna and Liar Princess and the Blind Prince. I believe that edition is quite sought after. I mean, it is stunning, so I understand why. N0 showed off these recent pickups as well as good old iDazzler with some very Japanese style games. Wonderful. E Rock Z showed off these games. Nicely Grandia Plus, the North American release of Wallachia, as I mentioned earlier in this episode. It was sent out late last week and is mwah, gorgeous. Extract got in these Panzer Dragoon. I'm definitely looking at the Forever Limited one of this one, but the price is it's a little bit much, to be honest. I really want it, but I was hoping for like $20 or $25. But still, I'm very envious. Fizen sent in this photo showing off some really great games. Fantasy Guns of Mercy in there. It's not often to see the, uh, the blue cover variant. Flower Angel Rave wanted to show off their visual novel collection. Those Spirit Hunter Games box art is really creepy and the main reason I want to add them to my collection. 
Fluster Shout showed off these pickups over Christmas and New Year. That's a really cheap price for Catherine. I would definitely buy it at that price. Flyro sent in these two. Uh, two games that we've seen a lot recently. I'm sad to see that Immortal seems to be getting big discounts everywhere at the minute. Not that it's a bad thing, but to me that screams like it's not been as successful as Ubisoft hoped, which, you know, I really wanted this to do well. Executive producer Ganicus, big thanks for using our links and codes as always, picking up these belters. Great to see the Japanese exclusive Silent Hill Dead by Daylight collaboration. That's going to be one of the most underrated Switch imports, I am sure. They also got in Monster Prom Double XL from Super Rare. Goma showed off a nice eye dazzler, have the recent release of Shaun the Sheep in there, a really cheap physical. Any word on the European if it's a code in a box yet? I don't know, anybody seen that? And Goma showed off this sweet-looking little Zelda shrine. Gonzalo Garrido showed off this picture a few weeks ago. Always happy to see Gigantic Army, which is a bit of a legend around these parts. Hayosha, many thanks for the huge support by using our links and code for many of these games. It really does help us out so much. Always a pleasure to see the culture of Omega Labyrinth life there. The essential lewd import for people of a certain cultural level like myself. Jason Woodbury, also big thanks for using our links and codes on some of these games. Panty Party, the perfect body edition. It's just ridiculous and stupid, but I'm very happy it exists. Jaden finally got in the extra goodies for Pikmin 3. I don't know if these were pre-order bonuses or what, but, you know, having Pikmin coasters, that's that's winning at life. Jeff to Seisha, uh showed off the Zero Escape series alongside Sushi Striker, which is probably Nintendo's cheapest published game out there at the minute. And you know what? It's a pretty good one. Jonathan showed off these pickups. Many thanks for using our links and codes, as always, buddy. Uh, fun to see First Press Games as release of Castle of Heart, or as our review called it, Castle of Fart. Uh, I'm sure the package is quality, though, like all of First Press releases. They do some good, good stuff. JP showed off these games. God, I need Digimon. All you guys is teasing me showing off all the time, and I can't find it here in China, so I think I'm just going to have to, you know, play Asia it. Jumble Skull showed off two pictures, including the Final Fantasy VII and a double pack, which has made its way to Australian shores, it seems. Katana 100 showed off these games. Axiom Verge is a great game if you're looking for a Metroid-like experience. Then be sure to put this one on your shopping list. Kishimoto's first submission showed off some quality games. I was a little surprised at how many uh, people chose Captain Tsubasa as their physical of the year. I still haven't had the chance to play it yet due to regional language differences in the Chinese version. So I'm going to have to bide my time sadly on this one. Mayrim picked up the Japanese exclusive Earth Defense Force World Brothers. He even completed it and gave us his full thoughts in the Discord. I always appreciate his musings on games he's completed. Neverbirth, recent winner of Burry Stars. Uh, I want Children of Zodiacs. Uh, we featured it in our strategy RPG list not too long ago, so yeah, I do want it. Nintendo Gamer Gal showed off these games. Oh man, I would love to see Chrono Cross on the Switch, and, and the first game for that matter, of course. Panzer Thief Zero got in these, including Shirin the Wanderer there. I, I don't know what's happened to my copy. I swear I ordered it for like a second time, but it's just not turned up yet. Anyways, great game if you enjoy the mystery dungeon genre. Park Ranger got in these games. Hard West, the collector's edition that's exclusive to Europe, as far as I can tell. Uh, I think it can be gotten pretty cheap right now. At least it was a few months ago. The bit of a beast. Peter Clark, many thanks for using our Play Asia code, my man. Uh, here are three games he picked up during free shipping week. Great stuff. Uh, cross code, a sleep hit on the Switch for sure. Fit Steven showed off these two beastly editions. That Lumines, or Luminis, I don't know how to say, is just ridiculous, but in a good way. Punky Dooster, many thanks for using our links and codes for a couple of these games. Phoenix Wright is essential, in my opinion. Essential import, I mean. I don't mention it often these days, but honestly, in terms of price, in terms of quality, content, it, it's a top-tier level import. Retro Boy sent in this great photo with some classic games. Fight Crab, just epic. Also appreciate you playing Shirin there. That's some great priority. It's rain time. Many thanks for using our links and code to pick up these games. The Japanese version of Monkey Barrels is available for those who don't live in the US. Also, Food Girls is just a lovely little visual novel genre mix. I really enjoyed playing that. Rich Bergen always tends to do things big and decided to raid Red Art Games' website during their holiday sale. Some top choices there. 
Robert showed off these games. I'm loving the amount of Shirin. Honestly, I didn't expect it to see it so much considering Limited Run will do something with it in the future. But, you know, it makes me happy to see that people won't wait for that. It's a great and niche game, a genre that I'm passionate about. So I'm happy to see it do so well. I don't know if like, our codes or links were used or not, but that's not the point. I'm just really happy to see it. Shadow007 showed off these games. I think this is the first alternative cover for Grandia that I've seen. Uh, the one that represents the original game rather than the sequel. I wonder if this one's rarer than the others. Silverhouse showed off their culture with Waifu Uncovered. Although Yumeo Tutu at the top there is the much better representation of culture, I would say. Steven665 picked up both the Dragon Quest Builders games. I know people are big, big fans of these two. Streaming on the corner, got in some great RPGs. Love the Brigandine game. I already have it digitally, so I will wait a while before I pick up the pricey Asian physical for myself. Uh, I do want it, though. Tim Tem showed off their two super rare blind boxes. There's a couple of pretty good games that they got. Transient Image, high five, brother. Repping one of my favorite genres, the Mystery Dungeon series. Love it. I wish there were more games of this genre on the Switch. Just need Konami to port Azure Dreams, which is like the pinnacle. It's literally the best of the genre. No question. Tyson Bailey got in these games. Love to see the absolutely stunning B-side games variant of Golf Story. It blows limit runs out of the water. Love the packaging. Visipon got in Food Girls, which came with a really cute poster. I think I really need to pick this up even though I have it digitally. Yikes Bike sent in an eye dazzler. Garfield cart. Look, sorry Neverbirth. I think I may have to take Burry Stars away from you and give it to Yikes Bikes just for showing off Garfield. Now that is what you call a proper collector. Ying got in Sayonara Wild Hearts, a beautiful game that I've not heard a single bad word against. Yo, Daddy picked up Steam World Double Pack from Super Rare, which I believe is almost sold out, so don't waste time if you don't want to miss out on that. Yusha got in another Steam World game, Quest, supposedly very good RPG, although it's card based, so I'm kind of allergic to it. Yvonne showed off these handsome editions alongside the absolutely stunning Moon Premium Edition. I wish I had mine with me, but it's in the it's in the UK. YZ showed off two very nice imports, which spring three, a beautiful package, but also Abyss of the Sacrifice. Still waiting for opinions on this one. I want it. Zero Flux also got in the alternative Grandia. I think I may like this one a little bit more. I also kind of want Gekido from uh, Red Art Games. The game is pretty average and a really random release, but man, that is some angry ass cover art. Kirby would be proud. And that's it, guys. I always enjoy seeing what you guys pick up. Please send me your pictures on Twitter over at So What About Game. You can DM me or you can tag me in a post and use the hashtag Let's Get Physical. And I'll give you a nice little retweet. Or you can email into us at contact us at switchwatch.co.uk. Just make sure you start the email title with Community Spotlight so I don't miss it. Plus, we have a Discord, which is always a nice way for us to have a chat with you guys. Plus, you can submit your photos there in the submission section. Please group all your games together and only send me one picture per week. I would really, really appreciate that. The server link for the Discord is below. Don't forget to do the survey. Uh, I've been reading through them like around 150 replies so far, and it's been fascinating. I'm already getting an idea of how to tweak the formula a little, how to add to it, how to improve and so on. But I'd appreciate more opinions. I was hoping for like uh, like 500 people to take part. Uh, so I would really appreciate your opinions. I especially enjoyed the health advice. Apparently I'm always unwell or something. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode of New Physical. Special thanks to our executive producers, the ever-growing list of executive producers, Dane Wilkinson, God of Red in Boombox, Brent McLean, Jonathan Rumor, Ganicus, Santa Tartaruga, Alolan Jojo, and Alexander Cato, and all the others who have joined our memberships. Thank you ever so much for your support. It really helps us so much. Please check out last week's episode in case you missed it. And thank you ever so much for watching this long. If you watched all uh, all this episode, then, you know, I, I really appreciate it very, very much. The longer you watch, the more YouTube likes us and will promote us. So, yeah, uh, I hope you have a good day, have a good week, and I'll see you next time. Take care.